Welcome to South Florida Food Chat. I'm Randy Kasowitz, and we're joined by Ignacio Garcia today from the Grove Bay Hospitality Group. And uh, welcome. Thank you, uh, Randy. Thank you for having me. We always love talking about food here in South Florida. Other than New York City, we seem to be the mecca for foodies. And every week we hear about new restaurants popping up. You guys have a bunch here, all kinds of different concepts. And uh, first of all, before we even talk about them, how did you get yourself into that wild industry? Wow. So it's a long story. I'm a local kid, you know, born and raised in Miami. Um, and I actually studied to, uh, to be an accountant. So I actually started my career as a, as a CPA. Um, and um, one day out of the blue, somebody that I used to work with at um, Deloitte and Touche, which is a firm that I was with at the time, uh, called me and said, hey, would you mind uh, going to an interview for, with Don Shula? Um, you know, Don Shula at the time, you know, had a lot of the, a lot of the restaurants. And I, I remember telling him, Ray, um, I don't know anything about the restaurants. Let me call you tomorrow and, um, and, and I'll let you know. That night out of the blue, Dave Shula, Don Shula's oldest son, called me. Um, and I remember seeing Dave on the sidelines coaching under his dad. <clears throat> he coached under Jimmy Johnson for the Cowboys, and then he was a head coach for the Bengals. So I used to look up to Dave Shula. And here he is calling me out of the blue a, a night saying, hey, Ig, I got your name from Ray. Would you mind coming in and you know, talking to my dad and I? I was like, sure, okay. And I walk into the office, you know, whenever the meeting was, and they have the Super Bowl trophies and the Hall of Fame jackets. And I didn't know anything about the restaurants, but I'm like, you know, these guys are selling steak and football. I'm a local Dolphin fan, yeah, you know, so I was in. And the rest is history. But once I got into it, I, I realized that I really loved everything about the restaurant industry. So I, I took every course you could take. I did seminars, I read books. I did a food service certificate from um, Cornell University. So I did everything I could to, to really learn everything about it. And 20 years later, you know, here we are. Uh, amazing, uh, that is an amazing story. So especially for someone like yourself, I also grew up here in South Florida. Used to go to the Dolphin games yeah. in the 70s when uh, Dave was on the sidelines right. with his dad. And uh, I know the whole story. So what prompted you to break out on your own and say, okay, it's time for me to move on. I can do this myself because it's a big risk. It is. It is. Um, I, I, after doing it, so I was, I was with uh, Shula's for about five years and then I was with another company for three years, a uh, local um, restaurant company as their CFO. So after doing it for somebody else for about eight years, I kind of figured out that, you know, I can do this and why don't I branch out and kind of try to do this on my own and you know try to make the money for myself as opposed to somebody else so I, I partnered with my lifelong friend um, you know we've been friends since high school um, and we're still partners today and um, we, just, we just we just decided to give it a shot so our first restaurant was actually a Shula's 347 grill uh, Coach Shula allowed me to do our, basically my own franchise. Was that located in South Miami? That's the one. That, I do remember that. Yeah. One. Yep. Yeah. So that was my first restaurant, and he um, he let us do our own franchise, and we kind of um, you know went from there. Gotcha. So talk to me about the first one that you created yourself. What would that be? So the first one we created would probably be Glass and Vine. Um, so Glass and Vine, which is in Coconut Grove, that was it, it's probably been around around seven years, and. Um, and, uh, which is an eternity, by the way. It was an eternity restaurant. for any restaurants, yeah. right? I mean, we know about the failure rate in our, in our industry. Um, so we partnered with uh, Georgia Rapid Cavoli, you know, to design the menu for us, and it was a, it was a it was a success from early on. You know, we're the only restaurant in Miami that can serve liquor next to a next to a children's park, basically, because the city code, you know, doesn't allow that. So they actually made an made an exception for us. So that's what's very popular for the parents where they can, you know, watch your kids play in the playground and, you know, drink their wine right there sitting in the restaurant. And, and that's a historic building, Glass and Vine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been there as well for dinner. It's a it's a wonderful atmosphere. You're, you're in the heart of the Grove. And, you know, timing is everything. It seems like when you got in there and started that, you were just on the cusp of the Grove starting to explode. Yeah, it was. It was. And then what, what we figured out quickly is that... Um, uh, is a formula that we would later, you know, keep using over and over in all our different restaurants. So I think what we do different from maybe other restaurant groups, and I think this comes, you know, because of our background, uh, because my partner is also CPA, you know, he was with Ernst & Young, so we have a very similar background. Um, we, we are, f the both of us knew the business side, and then, and then, you know, we learned the restaurant operations. We sort of did it backwards than, you know, most, most folks in our, in our industry. Um, so, what, what what we've done is that we've done all these chef partnerships. So if you look at our at our at our chef partners from Jeremy Ford to to Giorgio to um, 
Marcus Samuelson, um, um, Janine Booth, Jeff McInnes, and so forth. Um, we we are able to provide a platform for them where they can just focus on the food, and you know we do everything else. Uh, and, and I think for chefs, they normally don't want to handle the day to day business side of the of the of the restaurant. So when when they have a partner like us, where they know we we can handle all that, then th they can do what they do best. Seems like an, a really smart recipe for you because you know all the chefs which are really the culinary artists mm -hmm. they all know how to prepare food right but that's a completely different game than running a business when you got to manage food costs and labor costs and liquor costs that's a whole different animal it's hard to be everything to everyone right absolutely absolutely you know we think from the different part of the brain than they do. You know, they're 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 artists. You know, that's what they do. Um, and and we're business people. So when we both come together, it really works out. All right. You also have restaurants on mm -hmm. Miami Beach. I yep. know you have Stiltsville, which is a great uh, restaurant. It's been there many many years now. Yeah. Amazing seafood. Stubborn Seed mm -hmm. seems to be one that has caught fire as well. So tell me a little bit about those and what differentiates them sure. from what you started with with Glass and Vine. Sure. So Stubborn Seed is uh, um, our Michelin starred restaurant. Uh, so we've earned a Michelin star for three years in a row since uh, Miami, since since Michelin came to Florida and to Miami three years ago. There's only, I believe, 13 restaurants or so with, you know, Michelin star. So being one of those, you know, one of those few is is, you know, quite an accomplishment for us. So, that, so that's a partnership with uh, Jeremy Ford. Jeremy Ford won Top Chef season 13, um, and um, he's got a he's got a show on TV as well, uh, Fast Foodies. And um, so that's that's been around for six six years or so, and um, and it's and it's done very well. We're you know very proud of that restaurant, and you know we have future plans for that one as well. Stiltsville, that's a partnership with Jeff McInnes and Janine Booth, both of them former Top Chef contestants, both of them former James Beard nominated chefs. And that's a seafood restaurant, uh, uh, fresh seafood. Uh, you know, the menu changes uh, or, or fish cart changes, you know, depending on, you know, what the fishermen bring in. Um, and, and it's a great local spot. The, the idea of creating new concepts versus franchising uh, and just doing a second Stiltsville or a second Stubborn Seed, what's behind all that? We, we look at each opportunity um, Separately, uh, for, for example, like w we look at each opportunity and see and see, OK, in this spe specific location that we may like, we may say, OK, what's this area missing? What's the chef that would work well here? You know, what kind of cuisine? You know, what kind of environment? So we don't we don't approach it as trying to duplicate still so and trying to put a square in a in a in a in a round peg. We just look at the at the opportunity and say, OK, what's the best concept we can do here? And if that's a, Making another one of our current concepts great, uh, but normally we just come up with something new. But it seems like starting from scratch, a whole new concept is a lot riskier than taking a proven concept like Stiltsville or Stubborn Seed and saying, "All right, we're going to put one in Fort Lauderdale right now." Right, it is, it is, and and so far we've only kept to you know Miami as far as you know. Um, so so you're not normally going to do two of the same Russians in, you know, in the same city. Now we are going to move stubborn or we are going to do a stubborn seat in, in uh, Vegas uh, later this year at, at um, Resorts World. So that's something that we are going to take on the road finally. So that'll be the first concept that we're going to do a second one. But since all of our other concepts are in Miami, we, we, we really haven't found the opportunity to, you know, to do, to do another one of the same. The uh, Bayshore Club. Yeah. Uh, is in that's a historic spot by the way you're you're it in coconut is. grove on the waterfront yeah used to be the former scotty's landing which had a long long run right but uh tell me a little bit about that because that's we talked about coconut grove and what an exploding area it is now and uh you're right that's the heart of it all yeah it is well the name of our company grope hospitality group was really named after winning that lease from the city i want to say over 10 years ago um, so a lot of folks in Miami don't know, but City Hall, which is which is right next to this project, you know that was the old that was the old airport here in Miami, and then the the hangars, which is which is where you know which is part of our project, those were the hangars for the old Pan Am seaplanes, you know that used to fly to the to the um, to the, um, to the Caribbean. Sure. So that area has a lot of history, which is very cool. Um, so the city put on an, an RFP, you know, several years ago, and we ended up winning it. Um, and like you mentioned, Scotty's, you know, Scotty's w w was an institution there for about 30 years or, or, or so. 
but Bayshore is a great uh, waterfront, open seafood restaurant. It's uh, it, it's it's um, it's it's great for boaters. Uh, you know, people can you know pull up on their boats, and uh, again, also you know for seafood. Um, the, the Miami in general uh, seems to be a, a food mecca mm-hmm. for foodies. I mean, every day I pick up the real deal, and I read the articles, and this restaurant's opening, and this building. I mean, as quickly as the buildings are going up in downtown Miami, there's a restaurant going in on the ground floor. It's truly amazing what we're experiencing right now. I think since COVID, um, I think we were blessed that that um, that we were allowed to open early on compared to other cities in our country and really other parts of the world. So what happened was that everybody, as you recall, everybody came to South Florida. Um, so uh, along with tourists and you know people moving down here, a lot of restaurant companies you know throughout the country started opening shop down here. So the amount of restaurants that have opened down in Miami uh, has been you know huge you know over the last few years and the amount of restaurants that have closed and closed as well yeah so just last year i just saw a report 1700 plus eating establishments open open in miami that's a lot <laughs> now you know that's from a little coffee shop all the way to a you know fine dining restaurant but that's a lot of places so i think there's really an oversaturation right now and there probably there, there's probably going to be a market correction you know heading into the summer when when uh, um, sales slow down a little bit um but but the good news is that there's a lot of, you know, if, if you go back 15, 15 years ago, Miami was really not, in, 15, 20 years ago, Miami was not on par with really a lot of the other big cities in the country or in the world in, in terms of its, you know, culinary, uh, um, um, you know, status. But you could say right now we're on par with anybody in the world. Yeah, absolutely. I, I live on Miami Beach, but, and I get to the Grove uh, for, for family uh, events and things I need to do down there. I went to Brickell a month ago. I hadn't been there in a, probably a year. I can't get over what is going on in downtown Brickell and all the new restaurants that are popping up there. And it, it, it is incredible how many people are living in downtown Miami and how busy these restaurants are. Do you have any visions or dreams of going downtown? Um, possibly. Again, you know, we're very, we, we get offered opportunities all the time. And, and we, I would say that we turned on most of them. Uh, for us, if we're going to do a project, uh, we we really need to have a very high certainty th- that's going to be successful. And as you know, the Russian industry is not an easy industry, right? You know, the the failure rate is pretty high. For, you know, over the you know for the first three years of, uh, of any restaurant. So if we're going to do something, it's got to be a home run. It's got to be a no brainer. So probably at some point, but it's got to be you know the right thing. You're watching South Florida Food Chat, and we're here with Grove Bay Hospitality Group's Ignacio Garcia. Um, Talk to me about, you've got a secondary business going on, which is not so small now. You've, you're also doing, uh, operating uh, restaurants in airports, which is a completely different business. Right. How did right. you fall into that? So my partner uh, that I mentioned earlier, he was the CFO of a company called Areas, much like I was a CFO of Shula's doing street side restaurants. He was a CFO of Areas and their, their business is, um, you know, airport concessions. So that's kind of... Our two different backgrounds. That's how, that's sort of how we built our company. Um, so we're in uh, uh, Seattle right now, Miami, Raleigh, Providence, and and we're bidding in in, uh, in uh, some other airports. Yeah. It, is it difficult to manage uh, venues so far away, like Seattle, Washington, or Providence, Rhode Island? It's challenging. It's challenging, but um, but it's um, but you know, but I think we do a fairly good job. Yeah. Yeah. And do you like that part of the business? Do you like uh, it's a completely different business because you don't need to market. You don't need to advertise. you got a captive audience. People, I mean, in essence, you could serve garbage and you're still going to get sales because you're not really counting on repeat yeah. customers. Getting those contracts is extremely difficult. But, you know, but once you get them, it's it's a much easier business in terms of like, you know, just like you mentioned, you don't have to do any marketing. It's a captive audience. The guests are there. So it's, you know, so from that standpoint, it is pretty easy and it is a pretty lucrative business as well. 
Um, now, we, we, we do make it a point to run our airport restaurants the same way that we do our, you know, street side with the same standards. You know, everybody runs on the same standards, you know, with the same, uh, you know, procedures and everything. We don't, we don't want to serve, you know, I always tell our team, you know, I, I don't want to serve anything at the airport that I, that, that I myself wouldn't eat or that I wouldn't serve my kids. So we're, so, so we're very high on quality, even though it is the airports. I think we've spoken about four of your restaurants. I know you, that the Grove Bay Hospitality Group has eight restaurants that you're operating yeah. now. What are, are the other ones that we've missed out on? What other ones can you tell? Talk to us about here today. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we're very proud of is the fact that we have th three restaurants on the Michelin Guide. I think we're really one of the only groups in, in you know, Florida that has that. Um, where you talked about Stubborn Seed uh, as a Michelin star. Um, we have Red Rooster that's on the Michelin Guide, uh, which is in Overtown. Uh, Beauty and the Butcher, which is in the South Miami Coral Gables uh, um, border that, that is also on the Michelin Guide. Um, and then, um, we also have Root and Bone down in South Miami. Yeah, so we have a wide range of different restaurants from steakhouses to seafood restaurants to Southern to, you know. Is there one, well, I don't think you'll answer this, but is there one that is most dear to your heart is there, for any particular reason? That's like asking which, which one's your favorite child, you know? Well. I think it depends on the day. I, I, <laughs> that's, a, that's a perfect so, answer, I so, understand. But uh, no, I think, I think we're proud of all our restaurants. Um, I think um, I'm, I'm obviously very excited about Stubborn Seed because it has a Michelin star and also because of the future growth um, into Vegas. I think that's, a, that's an exciting market to get into and, and, that's, and we're looking forward to that. Talk to me about COVID and how it affected your business. How difficult is it now that let's say we're three years removed from COVID? How difficult is it to find good employees that are hardworking and looking for great opportunities? Yeah, you know, so something we did in COVID was um, was different from a lot of folks that I think has helped us retain um, staff even even you know four years later from COVID. So when PPP money came out, which, you know, PPP at the time, if you remember, you know, was supposed to be used to, you know, pay your employees. A lot of restaurant groups and, you know, a lot of businesses really kept the money to to wait till they reopened. And, you know, we made the decision to really just pay everybody, uh, even though everybody was at home. Restaurants were closed and, you know, but we but, you know, my partner and I looked at each other and, and we said, well, if we if we got ourselves by these core values, you know, when times are hard, then. You, you still got to stick to your core values and, you know, people focuses, um, you know, one of our core values. So, so we went ahead and paid everybody for eight weeks to stay home and not doing it. So we, so we, so we paid about, you know, $2 million and, you know, we, we joke even to today because we say that's the worst business decision we ever made, you know, but that was the right moral decision. And, you know, we would do it again. L looking four years later, that's really helped us retain a lot of people because I think that, 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 that really showed that we, you know, that we try to do the right thing. Um, uh, but, but in general, hiring is a lot easier now than it was, you know, you know, four years ago. I think I would say that hiring is back to where it was pre COVID. Um, so, which is, which is good. You also mentioned to me earlier that you have a scholarship program that you set we up do. with Florida International University. Tell us a little bit about that because that's very, that's a very unique idea and very uh, admirable you and your company. Yeah. So also from COVID, one of the things that we noticed was that a lot of, individuals weren't entering the hospitality industry. There was a lack of good candidates of just all the way from line cooks to management to, you know, to, to, to all the positions. So one of the things we decided to do was start the Grow Bay Foundation. We partnered up with FIU School of Hospitality and then we made a commitment. We, we made a five-year commitment uh, of uh, $300,000 to provide eight full full scholarships um, every year for underprivileged kids that that want to study hospitality, but th they just don't have the means to do it. I want to circle back since you wouldn't answer my question, which restaurant was <laughs> near and dear to your heart. Let's let me let me circle back and talk about Glass and Vine for a moment, yeah. which was your first. If I'm going there tonight on a date night, what would be your go to dish? What would you recommend? Can you at least give me a, give me steer me in the right direction there? Yeah, I mean, I would have, uh, I, I'm a steak guy, you know, so, so I, I would have the strip with the potatoes. That's, you know, that's my, that's my go-to, uh, that's my go-to dish. What about Stubborn Seed, the Michelin star restaurant? Well, Stubborn Seed is a, is a tasting menu. So, you know, uh, Jeremy Ford cooks, you know, changes the menu on a weekly basis based on what's, what's, uh, what's available and on the freshest ingredients. He actually just opened a farm down at Homestead. So he's actually farming a lot of our own produce. Um, so that's, uh, that's a tasty menu only. So whatever he's cooking, you know, that's what you're having there. 
and still so i love I, I love that restaurant i love yeah. the decor uh, the thing that, that that caught my attention the most was when you walk in there's a giant bathtub filled with ice yeah. with fresh fish on top what 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 is the thing that you like most about that what what, what what's the one item on that menu that we've got to I try. like having the whole fish. Uh, you know, like you said, you know, when you walk in, you know, you see the bathtub with all the fish or, you know, whatever comes in that day fresh. Um, so I like, you know, you know, you, you could actually pick it out yourself from, from the bathtub and just, you know, have it made whole. Uh, you could have it fried or baked or, you know, however you want to mint. Ignacio, we appreciate your time. Uh, good luck to you and the Grove Bay Hospitality Group. Sounds like you've got a lot of good things going on now and a lot of good things going on for the future. For South Florida Food Chat, I'm Randy Kasowitz.